All right, looks like we're live. Yes. Welcome back to Alphabet Scoop. Uh, as I say every week, uh, it's been a long week. This is a episode 23, I think, right? Mm -hmm. um, and man, it, especially the last 24 hours with all this Pixel 3 stuff, it's just been a riot. And it's been a four day week, like Labor Day on Monday. So it hasn't really been that long. It's felt like a long week to me. <laughs> oh yeah, it feels like it. Yeah, so I guess we'll start the the uh, the show off talking about. Uh, I, I I don't know. Like, can we call it a conspiracy? Is it is it worthy of that of that name? No, I don't think so. It isn't. It ain't. Really ain't. Uh, yeah, so the Pixel Three, uh, we we pretty much know everything already, uh, all about it, and you've you you would know that if you've been watching the show for the last uh, four months. But over the last twenty four hours, and I guess extending beyond that, I get for for about a month now, it seems like there's just been this controversy or this conspiracy. I guess you could call it. I I, I think it's just nonsense is probably the best word for it. But it's 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 basically YouTubers who are trying to claim that all of this has been a farce that everything we've seen that the notch uh that you know the underwhelming leaks are all just a decoy and that what google really has in store for us is some kind of high-end phone that we uh have heard nothing about from anyone from us to bloomberg to android police to uh android open source project to any source you could possibly think of uh, these people want to claim that that device exists, um, and that's that's pretty much the gist of it. I think it pretty much stems from uh, a hatred of the notch, I guess. Yeah, um, this this tall, ugly notch, which everybody hundred percent believes is just a fake due to how ridiculous it looks like. Yeah, I want to quote. Uh, so. Like the number two post on our Android right now, uh, the author of that post linked to, I think his name's John Prosser, right? Um, YouTuber. Something Prosser. He, his video is the one that's been going viral uh, over the last 24 hours. Uh, he runs a, a YouTube site or a YouTube uh, channel called Front Page Tech. And uh, someone shared the video on our Android and they said, quote, so I guess this means there is a very strong possibility that all of the Pixel 3 XL leaks we have seen are not only false, but may have also been orchestrated by Google the entire time. Which I, I mean, that's that probably, probably summar summarizes pretty well what what this this little yeah. niche of of people want to believe. Um, but I, I think it's it's pretty easy to debunk. I mean, I don't know. I, I think I think the big thing is that. Uh, the phones are real. Like you can't, like you can't say that the leaks are false because they the phones are real. Like we've we've seen them on planes and trains and automobiles, and like like you like you wrote last week or this week. Um, you know, dozens of units are in the hands yes. of Russian and, bloggers. Like whether or not, not whether or not there's another phone, the fact that the Pixel Three XL has a notch is true. Yes, like that, this is there's a phone no, that Google is going to sell. I hope that, I mean, I hope that the very, 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 very slim chance that I'm wrong doesn't come, by to, come back to bite me on this. Mm -hmm. But it, it is essentially 100% fact that the Pixel 3 XL will launch and it will be the phone that you've seen. Mm -hmm. um, and the Pixel 3 will be the phone that you've seen on, on that front too. I mean, the, the notchless Pixel 3. And if, if you really hate the notch this much that you really want to force the larger one or this premium, I don't know. what, are the, what you, you asked the perfect question. You asked me, what would the differentiator be? If it, like Imagine this Ultra Pixel or Pixel 3 XXL or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. What would the differentiator be? And that's a really good question. I mean, you know, the Pixel 3 XL is, has the Snapdragon 845. It has all the specs. It may not have, you know, people have been complaining that it doesn't have six gigs of RAM, but uh, who cares? Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't think that's really that big of a deal. And I think Google's been focusing on op uh, software optimization, but we don't have to go on that rabbit trail. What, what do you think? I mean, do you think that there's any, any possible significant differentiator that they could come up with besides this one doesn't have a notch? <laughs> I mean, it's quite obvious that the Pixel Ultra, if it exists, it has a headphone jack. Let's just get that out of the way. 
<laughs> yeah, this is the same name. same audio. Because you have to you have to listen to the customers. That's what they want. They want a headphone jack. It's the overlap. So the, the Pixel Ultra it, is going to be the phone of the people. It's the phone of the people. The thou the thousand <laughs> all the phone of the people. It's going to be the our Android phone. It, it's going to have six gigs of RAM. You know, super high res display, no notch. Headphone jack. They're gonna get rid of the squeezing feature. Uh, it'll be it'll be made of pure metal, and it will be the size of a brick. That's the R Android phone. It will have all the best specs, and it will be completely unusable. Honestly, the or, I was joking, but the overlap between the people who want a headphone jack and don't want a notch, it's it exists, and it's quite fun. Yeah, I I think there's a lot of there's a lot of things that exist. I mean. I think that the people that say that are also the same kinds of people that cannot see that there is a little bit of good design in the iPhone, for instance. I mean, that's mm. that's a controversial yeah. statement, but you know, it's like it's it's like it's like a very extreme side of of opinion in the Android space. That's like this, like what a good phone is is like you just make the Nexus Five every year and you just bump the specs. Like that's that's what these people believe. Basically, oh, God. Um, so, so yeah, I'll give you my soapbox, but it's it's ridiculous. I want to add that the idea that Google made a phone like they put so much R and D effort to make I don't know a dozen phones and leak them out to to random YouTubers in Russia or whatever. That is an expensive, expensive thing for them to do. You can't, making a phone is hard, it's difficult. Even if you make a phone on a whim, you can't, you, it's not worth the effort to like troll people and to hide your real one by making a fake one. It's, yeah, I, I think it's it very, work like that. it's very clear that it's not a troll because there's too much, there's too many pieces of evidence coming from too many different sources. Uh, you know, like this all kicked off. The original thing was a, a pair of screen protectors that came out of was it Shenzhen or Hong Kong? Like, like that. Oh. There's no way that those screen protectors, which very clearly showed the notch, oh, could no, anyway no. could anyway be connected to. Wait, wait. Remember how if you like adjusted the image just right, you can see a third screen protector. You remember that? Oh, right. Yeah, I yeah, forgot yeah. about that. that. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Uh huh. I don't know. Uh, that was that was, I, I I totally forgot about that. And yeah. then there was also there was also what what was the conclusion on that? What where, where did we land? Did we just land that it was like we it was never, uh, we didn't touch it. Yeah, we didn't touch it with a ten foot. It doesn't it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that Google would do a bigger version of the small Pixel three. Why, they, it doesn't make sense that they would do a notched one and a not notched one with the same hard. I don't know. It, I, I guess that's crazy. But I mean, the other thing is, I, I guess we can, you know, I think based on everything we've seen, the evidence is all stacked against there being a third phone. Because, you know, I mean, even Mark Gurman and Mark Bergen over at Bloomberg, who are both stellar reporters, who are vo both very well sourced, they um, co wrote a piece on Bl at Bloomberg, like saying that there's two phones this year. And mm -hmm. if anyone, besides i guess us and android police and a few other people would know that in and they would they would be the ones who would know i think um so i don't know it's just in it's just crazy i guess i guess if you do want to uh you know give it i don't know like be devil's advocate there are a few things that seem kind of weird i mean one of them as you mentioned is the fact that there was what looked to be a third screen protector in that original Screen mm -hmm. protector image, like playing devil's advocate, it's like that's weird. Another Isn't thing that's that's kind of weird is that you know um, the code names. Oh yeah, the code names. So there's uh, so Droid Life reported like earlier early this year on they they said that their source told them there were two uh, devices they called premium, one device they called high end. We don't really know what that means or how those two describe descriptions are different. But they gave mm -hmm. three code names. They gave Blue Line, Crosshatch, and Albacore. And Blue Line and Crosshatch are accounted for. We know for a fact yeah. that Blue right? Line and Crosshatch, we have very significant evidence that that's the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL as we know them. Whereas Albacore is, I think that was on my list of prototype names too from 
early la- or like m- maybe you can pull that up and check but i think I that might have been on my list too albacore and maybe it wasn't but it, regardless that 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 code name as of now is completely unaccounted for but all of this said it was not will, on your list okay okay well blue line and cross hatch were though okay okay well regardless mm-hmm. um Oh, man, I lost my train of thought now. There was one more thing I was going to say. Dang it. Uh, there uh, was that one thing about um, the somebody Google shooting an ad and um, yeah. claiming to see. Ah, that's such a nothing burger to me. I can't see anything in that photo. It looks like a Pixel 2 XL to me. Yep. So that, that's where I landed on that. Um, uh, there was one more thing that I was going to say. I can't remember. Oh, here, this is it. Um, so... I have heard that there are more devices than just the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL. Like it's yes. not like Google is working on it, their their development cycle for phones is like two years plus. And, yeah. So and like next phones. I've, I've, I've heard there. that the I've heard that the, what we know is the Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL were signed off on like early this year, like January maybe, and um, they may have even been like close to finished nearing nearing being ready to go around the time of the event yeah, um, the last event last year so th- i guess w- one of the things to remember is that you know next year's phones are floating around like there's already they're already prototyping um the made by google 2019 uh phones and so that could be contributing to some of the weirdness or some of the leaks mm-hmm. and another thing that i heard and I don't know, I th- like this is kind of like second or third hand, so I don't know how much validity or how much credence to give it, but I heard that one of those devices, um, what I guess you could call a Pixel Ultra or a Pixel 4, um, Google had actually considered launching this year alongside the two that we know of, um, and that, you know, it they ultimately decided against it. Um, so, I mean, that's one little piece that might fit might help put the puzzle together but regardless if i were if, if i'm to bet right now my money is on all we'll see at the event on october 9th is the pixel 3 with no notch and the pixel 3 with a notch because it mm-hmm. does not make any sense there's so many reasons to believe that this higher end yeah. or whatever like what is it going to be is it going to be ceramic with uh you know like some it kind just, of like iPhone like more more you know get rid of the bottom chin like what what would the differentiator be in the first place? But on top of that, um, you know, are they going to introduce a device that's higher high super high end so that they can cannibalize the sales of the other two? I, it just doesn't. There's a lot of things that don't add up. Like even Apple, you know, never did that until the iPhone 10 came around. Mm-hmm. The iPhone 10, which launched alongside the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. They were confident enough that enough people were, were willing to buy that one thousand dollar phone. Um, hint, hint. They were right uh, that it didn't matter because the iPhone eight sold well on the lower end, and the iPhone ten sold well on the high end. And it, actually, the iPhone ten ended up over like outselling the iPhone eight. And I think if Google were to do the same thing, they would have they, it, the opposite would happen. They would yeah. not push. They would not push one thousand dollar phones like Apple managed to do. Yeah. Or at least I strongly doubt that they would be able to do that. They couldn't so, push one thousand dollar phones without killing that what would end up being the middle of the range, the three XL, because the enthusiast will buy the expensive one. That is proven, true and true. Yeah, but I guess you know, I don't know. That's my soapbox. I think uh, another thing, uh, man, from from oh, I don't know. I can't remember. I was going to say something else, but I'm going to come back or yeah, it'll come back to me. Um, oh yeah. So this whole video today, today's video that Prosser put out was about him speculating that them using, so like he's been putting out like pixel three hate videos for those that don't know. And his speculation was that, you know, they were going to take a clip or he knows which clip they wanted. So I don't know, but you know, we don't know what clip they what they what clip they took, but assuming first of all, assuming all this happened, but assuming all all this is actually ha- has all actually happened, which I don't think I really have any reason to say that Prosser is a liar, but it, assuming it all happened, you know, they took a little sliver of one of his iPhone three or iPhone not Pixel, not, not, Pixel three Pixel. hate 
Pixel 3 hate videos and is going to like he's trying to position it as like, why would they want a video of me bashing the pixel? Are they going to come out and prove that all of us were all, you know, getting all, you know, upset about nothing? Are they going to prove us wrong with them third pixel or whatever, whatever? But I think the obvious answer to that question is no, they're going to do a montage. And the way I see it is they're probably going to do some kind of montage of like a mix of like, you know, just like controversy or criticism. And I could see, you know, uh, he mentioned, you know, one clip was going to say something like Google should fire their entire design team. And to me, that sounds so funny. Like I could totally see yeah. some kind of intro montage into the event as a whole, you know, maybe, you know, like last year's event at the montage was just basically all a collection. And it was all positive. So that that's different. But it was all positive. It was just a collection of Google in the media, Google on YouTube, Google in people's lives, like Google on mm -hmm. TV. It was a collection of made by Google stuff in people's lives and just the impact that it's already making on culture. And um, so I, I could see them doing the same thing again, but throwing in, you know, throwing in a little dash of yeah, like. because it would be wait, funny. It would be very funny. It would people be, it would be hilarious. Like they can mix it up. They can like, like I, I think Ben shown like his point was that seems crazy that you know that they would mention google should fire their employees but i think that sounds like totally normal if, if, if it's a video of like you know a, a vast collection of different things like for instance that video of that um i think it's like an older woman um hispanic who was trying to like say okay google to that google home yes. yeah, google has fish. used that and they used it in a commercial and it's like that doesn't exactly look that doesn't make google look good because it makes it look like the Google Home could not understand, you know, like the variance, the var the, the variety and culture and language, which is how one way you could interpret it. But on the other hand, it's like showing how much of an impact Google's stuff is making on culture. And people really, really passionately hating the notch is one of those things. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I think I think that's what's happened. I think we'll see a montage. I think, you know, we'll see a little sprinkle of like really harsh criticism that everyone will think is funny because no one at the end of the day, except for us, cares about the notch. <sighs> so so yeah. with that said, what is actually happening is on October 9th, Google is having an event. It yes. starts at 11 a.m. Eastern in New York City, which is a departure in the past two years. And uh, the, inv we'll the invitation, there. yes, we'll be there. And the invitation has no hint so far, no Easter eggs that you can dig through. It just says, I love New York. Um, Pixel the 2. Gift, the gift it. says uh, less than three mm -hmm. on the love. And yep. um, maybe that means less than three pixels, two pixels, <laughs> two Google ah. Pixel, two, two Google Pixel 3s. See, it's right in the invite, guys. There's no, There's not three pixels. It says less than three in the invite. It's pretty straightforward. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like Google, to to um to speak to the earlier point about it being funny. Google, they they don't mind making fun of themselves. Like last year, the reason we have this Pixel Ultra name is because they showed it on screen. It's it's a thing they do. They're they're funny people. They're not too serious about anything. They can take yeah. a joke. Yeah. So and. They're not really insecure either. They know they have good designers. I mean, their hardware design is like awesome. And I mean, you know, you know, there's like the, there's many, many years of praise Duarte kind of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, narrative. So th I, don't, I don't think they're I don't think they're scared at all of of throwing up a funny little clip of a random YouTube vlogger saying um, something is and something as insane as fire all of your designers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so yeah i mean that's that's pretty much all there is i think we talked about that longer than we wanted to but mm -hmm. that's all there is on pixel 3 i think um let's see i think i i, I just wanted to yeah, i wanted to mention though i guess the final like devil's advocate is you know it's theoretically possible it's not impossible strictly speaking that there is a third phone like or that even even that there google once was a third phone even there's not there's absolutely it's absolutely not impossible that there once was a third phone in the plans and it's also not technically impossible that there is a third phone that will launch but nothing we've seen 
there is not a single shred of convincing evidence outside of basically like second or third person rumor. Like that is the extent of it. Um, some of those second and third person rumors I've heard that the public hasn't heard. So, I mean, I've heard we, you and I and 9 to 5 Google and Android police and other sites have heard more than is actually public probably. Like we've heard more from sources of sources and such, you know, stuff like that. And, and not to, you know, not to toot our own horn, but if anyone, you know, we should, or someone near us, around us, in our community, in our circle of, of writers or reporters should know. And so, yeah, no evidence. And that's that's where I'll leave that. Next up, we have Shortwave. So this was a little bit of a scoop. I guess we can call it a scoop that you had last night. Uh, mm -hmm. Shortwave is an Area 120 project, and now we know more about it, right? Yeah. So it's uh, from last month, we know Google has confirmed that it's an experimental podcasting app that will help people listen to content in newer ways. It's we until last night, we didn't really know what this experimental idea was. But from early concept vendors that we've uncovered, it describes this very bold vision of Google possibly clipping podcast of maybe using an AI or something, just finding the relevant sections to you as a personalized individual, and then curating it into a into a, a feed that's maybe one to 10 minutes long or something like that. And so the basic idea is that you can find all the good podcasts that having to watch without having to listen to every single one out there. It's, it's hyper curation, hyper specific. And honestly, it makes sense. We're in the golden age of podcasting with just so much good stuff. And for Google, they want to try at one point, one stage, they laid out this vision of cutting and clipping podcasts and just offering it to people. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. But as you mentioned in your post, it could also be really controversial, especially, I mean, if you think about it, podcasts have long been the domain of Apple. You know, they kind of mm -hmm. popularized the idea and popularized the brand. And so, um, you know, it, it's... Culture, it, it, yeah, up. definitely. The culture has grown up around iOS devices and stuff. And so... Um, as you mentioned, it's it, it could be seen as as pretty I don't know offensive to those who have been in that culture for so long to see Google take it and then and then uh, take all yeah. that content and and cut it up into little pieces that they can serve and serve their own ads on. Which because unlike a movie or TV like with YouTube with this clips galore, these are smaller individuals. Of course, it's like the New York Times, NPR, and whatever, but. So many other podcasts are just individual people who run ads to monetize and they can't afford to have Google making it of Google removing those for the convenience of these 10 minute shows or whatever. Yeah, admittedly, you did, you know, you did mention that we don't really know how no. this would work based on. Mm -hmm. So like we can get into that, but Google came out and commented and said, you know, uh, this is an old concept, basically. It, it doesn't represent what shortwave looks like today. But even if you do take it as this is what shortwave shortwave is today, which if I were if I were to bet, I would say it it, it probably is probably not that far off from what this yeah. designer imagined. Um, at least the overarching vision is probably not far off. But Google has to kind of you know, yeah. uh, uh, you know, preempt the backlash before yeah, it exactly. even has a chance to finish and exactly offer its argument. Exactly, but even if you do take it at face value and you say this is what shortwave is, you know, it it does seem, you know, there's lots of unknowns, you know, because this divine design document kind of like gives the, you know, the overall overall mission statement of of the product or whatever, or a very broad, vague mission statement, um, which doesn't really it leaves a lot of things un unanswered. You know, would this app be something that you know? Uh, podcasters could submit their content to and be something like a platform like YouTube or something or, or Anchor, which we've talked about before. And, you know, could they, you know, uh, get some kind of monetize their content some way if they allowed their content to be part of these shortwave shows? Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's an up in the air. It was like, you know, obviously Google, I think they're for, you know, for copyright reasons and for 
potential riot reasons, they couldn't just take other people's content without permission and just use it for their own purposes. Um, so that that's one question that's up in the air. Another question is, would it be, um, would it be people manually curating this and like yeah. knowing like, okay, Alphabet Scoop is one of the best Google podcasts, which it is, uh, or, you know, whatever other podcast is a human taking those different things and finding little snippets and putting them together into bite-sized pieces so that which, anyone can consume yeah, which them. by itself is a good idea. Like that. Absolutely. That There's so but many that, podcasts to listen to. Exactly. Exactly. Then I, I'd love a product like that. So if anyone out there that's not Google wants to do it, I'm on board. Um, but that's not very area 120 kind of, the, mm -hmm. you know, that's not, it's not a very area 120 approach. Um, it's felt like area 120 are kind of like halfway between mainline Google experiments or Google products and, you know, a real, um, product uh, roadmap and and the, you know the moonshots of X. It's kind of halfway in between. Actually, to be more specific, if I were to put it on on a on a spectrum, I would put mainline product roadmaps in Google, and then I would put Area 120, and then I would put ATAP, and then I would put uh, X. And ATAP so for it, hardware. Yeah, ATAP for hardware. But it's you know they do software stuff too. But you know yeah. it's like. It's not super experimenting and crazy. I mean, if you look at um, their uh, reply app, for instance, or yeah. um, something they launched today, actually, which yes. was just a site for discovering travel stuff in a new way, right? Yeah, it's it's called a chewing bird. Um, it's actually it's super neat. As a person who loves Google Trips. Um, their app that lets you, uh, it stores your itinerary, it lets you down on offline maps where you're going. Um, Chewing Bird has a more curated approach of getting travel tips, of finding the best deals. Let's say you want to take a tour of the San Francisco Bay. You can put in your criteria, like whether you want it at night, whether you want a guided tour, whether you want to eat or have it be private. And you can put all these things in, and uh, Touring Bird automatically sorts and finds the best deals for you that matches your yeah. criteria. It's a super tiny thing. It's just a website. There's no apps. It's completely web based. Has some material theme, and it could it this could be a Google Maps feature or a Google Trips feature, but it isn't. It's their own separate thing, and if it becomes successful, I'm sure it'll be integrated into those two products, but in the meantime, yeah. it's a solid idea. Yeah, so as as Area 120 mentioned in, I guess Google spokesperson is, is who I should attribute this to in their comment, you know, it's very Area 120-like um, that Google, or that Area 120 is constantly experimenting and iterating on their on their stuff. And that's kind of the, that's the excuse they used for, you know, this is not really representative of what shock, of what shock, uh, Shortwave shock. looks like shockwave. Shortwave. No, um, say shortwave. Shockwave. I kept thinking of a the Adobe thing. Um, yeah. Shockwave, um, yeah. But yeah, so I think I guess my justification to say is probably not something that they were intending to be human curated. Was that it, it, I feel like Area One Twenty is kind of they're trying to be a little bit more off the wall or a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just, crazy. Just want to add here. Um, so we we have to take shortwave in the context of Google Podcasts. And we know that Google Podcasts has this grand, ambitious effort to apply AI to translating podcasts or transcribing podcasts. But right. also, one of the more off-the-hand things they said before Google Podcasts officially launched was that they see audio as a, the next kind of thing that Google search as a next kind of Google search result in the same way right. they can find clips of videos and do text snippets of it that exactly answer what you want to know. Yeah. What yeah, for instance, is doing. Yeah. I guess you could use the example of, you know, they could use AI after this podcast is uploaded, they could use AI to see that we talked about how ridiculous Prosser's video was. And someone could type in Google search, is Prosser crazy or whatever. And they might find a little snippet of our podcast because their AI or whatever realized that that, it's that was a direct perfect. response. It's a direct yeah, exactly. response. It's brilliant. It's it, brilliant. Yeah, it is. And I'm excited ambitious. for it. I'm really excited. Um, so, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much all there is with Shockwave. Shock, shock shortwave. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how many times I might have said short shockwave in the last. Yeah. Um, 
20 minutes. Well, every time I was writing, Shockwave. That's, yeah. Reminds me of those Flash um, games. But yeah. So yeah, it's that. definitely it, there's probably it's probably changed since since this design experiment. But uh, yeah, they're still it's, working on it. It's coming eventually. Yeah, yeah. Um, side note: the same designer that we found this stuff on it also worked on a project for a website to unify uh, iOS beta apps, but it was kind of too minor for us to cover. So that's interesting. If you're listening to Alphabet Scoop and you care about weird minutia like that. Or you um, have an iOS device as you listen yeah. to Alphabet Scoop on your iPhone. Yes. And uh, yeah, so yeah, that's, that's that. So the next thing, um, the next major thing that happened this week is Chrome. So much Chrome news. Uh, the browser celebrated its 10th anniversary. It launched September 1st, 2008. And 10 years later, we're on version 69. Insert joke. And there's a lot in this update. There's the Google Material theme, which it's all rounded, all white. It's across the Mac, Windows, Android. It's a very, honestly, it's an ambitious update. This is, this is probably the biggest Google Material theme rollout. Yeah, I, probably. I can't I'm, think of anything bigger. I like I like the look of it. I like you know I like the rounded corners. You know yes. uh, one of those one of the little things. You know when you were hovering over your bookmarks bar or whatever, all those buttons are now you know more pill rounded. Shape. Yes, pill shape. The pill shape is everywhere. Um, and you know I, the one thing, the one complaint I have is that to me it feels like ten percent slower, mm -hmm. which is like for my daily my daily browsing habits. You know I'm an internet power user. <laughs> <laughs> so I need I need that speed, and it feels a little bit slower to me. I don't know if I haven't been able to find anyone else who agrees with me, but it feels slower to me, and it, it's just enough to kind of tick me off. Like opening and closing tabs, especially, it feels like there's just a little bit of a delay when I click on the on the close tab button or whatever. Honestly, um, that could be artificial at this point. It instead might be of, instead yeah, of because like, you yeah absolutely because you get used to the animations and so. Yeah. And this it may just be the the, the animation is different, but it feels slower. So that's possible. Yeah, if that's what you mean. Yeah, it's um, it's it's on desktop. It's on Android. It's coming to Chrome OS eventually next week, maybe. And yeah, it's just ten years of Chrome, and I think this is a, a good way. The timing ended up perfectly with the Google Teal theme in twenty eighteen, and yeah. the tenth anniversary. Yeah, and uh, the 20th anniversary of Google, too. Yes. Which they kind of sort of started to celebrate. So, like, I think that's probably going to be something that they celebrate on an ongoing basis over the next month. They might, they probably, actually, I would, I would, I would bet that Sundar is going to come out on the day of oh, the event. Absolutely. I bet 20 year, 20 year Google is going to be the first thing that Sundar talks about. That's, yeah. That's what I would guess. Last month we just celebrated our twentieth anniversary, something like that. That's a given. Right. Yeah. And we um, know they're celebrating it this month. Internally yes. at least. Yeah, probably externally too. I mean, they did that blog post early a few days ago. And I mean, I would expect little things, you know, like Google's really they do a lot of cutesy things like doodles and uh, you know, little games and, you know, like little yeah. landing pages for different things. Like, you know, every year the android.com site gets redesigned to be Christmassy and, you know, they do little like whimsical things like that. Hmm. And I think we'll see a lot of stuff like that across their products, probably mostly in search or whatever. There might be an Easter yeah. egg here or there, you know, we'll see stuff like that with their 20th anniversary. Um... And I guess on that note, another thing we mentioned was that besides Chrome um, itself, the Chrome browser in and Android and Mac, Windows, Linux, and to be Chrome OS, um, the Chrome Web Store website also got a Google material theme, which is, again, like a little, little tidbit of minutia that, you know, only crazy people like us care about. But... Uh, Chrome Web Store looks a lot nicer now. I got a, a facelift. Uh, for those that don't know, Chrome Web Store is the destination for installing extensions, extensions. and themes. Which is shocking um, themes to exist. Yes, it is shocking that themes still exist because uh, you'd be overriding the Google Material theme now. Yes. Which and does not seem like something Google oh, would yeah. want. 
how does that trans? I haven't checked any themes out, but I'm, that's going to clash a hundred percent. Probably. I don't know. I don't know how that works because it's usually a coat of paint. You know, it's, it doesn't change the physical. No, but, the mm -hmm. physical. It's usually just colors. So maybe, maybe, maybe since it is just colors, it will maybe. be. Maybe it would just be compatible. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but kind of related to all this, I guess we can get into talking about uh, Nocturne and Meowth and Atlas. And we, we decided this week to start piecing together. So Chrome Unbox, have to give them a shout out. Um, XDA as well have been digging up little pieces of tidbits of stuff about unreleased Chromebooks because in the Chromium source, Google pretty much de develops all this stuff in the open. and. Mm -hmm. So our Kyle, Kyle Bradshaw, which now that I think about it, we should have had him on, but uh, maybe next week. But um, he's been piecing together some of his own finds and some finds that you know Chrome and Box have spotted and uh, XDA have spotted and trying to piece together exactly what these might be um, given everything we know. Um, and so this week he did Nocturne. I think he's planning to do Atlas uh, probably Monday, I'd guess. I think he's already in the works on that one. Atlas and Meowth, which are two others. Um, which uh, we think. Roundups on those. Yes, which we think. We have a, a strong suspicion that all three of these are Google hardware. And that's why we're focusing on those. We don't really care about stuff other companies are doing. But Nocturne specifically, so he posted, we were the first to share this really interesting GIF um, that shows a hand, uh, you know, um, putting their finger on a fingerprint sensor on the top left corner of the device, which is connected to a commit that we found, or maybe it was Chrome and Box that found. Um, yeah, I think it was Chrome and Box. They found a commit mentioning um, that the user would have to put, uh, the fingerprint sensor would be at the quote, at the top left of the Chromebook. So now we have both code and visual representation uh, for the fact that this hardware, which we suspect is made by Google, will have a fingerprint sensor on the top left. One thing that we don't really know yet, we haven't really pieced together, is what exactly are these devices? We know they're all Chrome OS. That's a given. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, there's varying specs. Um, Kyle can explain better. I promise we will dive deeper into these next week after he's gotten those other two posts up. Um, but two of them, Meowth and Nocturne, have the same display resolution. Um, they're both compatible with the same keyboard hardware, which we know that keyboard hardware specifically has an assistant button and a hamburger button on it. Um, so like it's Google, we, regardless, it's we know Google's that it's, it's Google's keyboard, or at least it's the same as the Pixelbook key keyboard. Maybe Google is opening up the, the design or opening up the option for other assistant. keyboards to have assistant yeah. keys. So you know, there's not any surefire like smoking gun proof but it does seem to be based on you know looking at these Chromebooks versus the other Chromebooks that we have seen in development like Cheza and a few others. Um, it does seem to be that these are the most likely to be Google's. Now Atlas, on the other hand, is has a 4K display resolution, but it also shares with some of these other um, qualities that we've mentioned that would suggest that it's a uh, made by Google uh, product, but. Nocturne, we see fingerprint scanning, we see Whiskers, which is the name of the of the hardware keyboard platform, which we know is detachable as well. So that's interesting. And then the cameras, uh, somehow he connected the cameras as evidence that this is made by Google as well. And all these different Sony things. Senses as the Pixel. As the Pixel book, yep, that's what it is. Phones. Uh, oh, oh, the Pixel phones, okay, yeah. Um, so that's, we, we have all these pieces of evidence and it looks like Nocturne may be uh, a Google product. But I guess we can take all of this and now we can, you know, especially next week, we'll probably have Kyle on. We can talk about what this might actually mean in terms of what Google announces it made by Google in October. Um, mm -hmm. My guess, and I posted my predictions. So last night I was up at like 1 a.m. and thinking about the Made by Google event because that's just the kind of person I am thinking about the one made by Google event. And so I wrote out my predictions on what hardware we'll see. And I mentioned two different things. I am making a wild guess that Atlas is like a high end, super high end, like 1000 plus kind of Pixelbook 2 or Pixelbook successor, which would launch maybe this year, maybe next year. I don't know. It's early, but mm -hmm. um, 
that's my guess on Atlas because 4K display and seems insane on a yeah. Chromebook. But I don't, I don't, I also am not super, you know, deep in the weeds on on any of the other details. Um, so this is wild guesses, as I mentioned. And then my other wild guess is that Meowth or Nocturne or both are tablet esque, more tablet esque kind of five hundred dollar, seven hundred dollar devices that are convertible. Um, so that's my that's my guess. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's based on what we know today. And I guess might change by next week when when uh, we have more information. But that's my guess. What do you think about all this? <laughs> yeah, I think the most interesting hardware with these would be would be these convert these convertible tablets because we've only seen one, and it's been an education model from Acer, and we have. It's this world of possibility of making it a more premium device, of putting a stylus, of doing a having keyboard dock. It would really take Chrome OS into uh, into another strata, and honestly, comes as Microsoft just announced a week before the Google event on October second. It's revamping its Surface hardware, so mm. we know. Uh, I forgot the name of the initiative to put Windows to certify Windows and future Chrome OS devices, mm -hmm. but it's it's Google is going after Microsoft, and there's no better way to do it with hardware, with premium hardware that speaks to the people who these business professionals would other otherwise be buying Windows. And yeah, another another little interesting thing. It's it's most definitely nothing because this page also used to have the Pixel C on it, I think. But the Google Store page for laptops. If you click laptops, the URL says laptops awesome. underscore. Tablets. Yep, they never updated so, it. They never changed that, and it's been that way since I think like I think the last time the Google Store got a refresh was in like November or December or something. And so at I least see. since then, it's never been changed. So I think that that suggests that. Uh, you know, Android tablets are long dead, except Samsung. But Chrome, Chrome OS, OS tablets, tablets. Are, the, are the new hotness, apparently. Um, on Android tablets being dead, <laughs> there's still so many seven-inch tablets used by like restaurants to like do. Um, oh yeah, Yelp or whatever. It's quite amusing that there's like a counter of seven-inch Android tablets. That's when they all went. Oh, yeah. And then there's also those kiosks at, like, Chili's and stuff. I'm pretty sure those are running Android. Yeah. I'm not sure. But, it's you know, yeah, they're, like, little six-inch tablets that just run Android, and they're all, like, single-purpose. I implore everyone, the next time they go to Best Buy, to find the Android tablet section. It still exists, and it's these $100 tab, crappy-looking $100 tablets that are still being sold to people. So. Actually, you know, the biggest the biggest sector of the Android tablet market is almost surely uh, the Amazon Fire tablets. Oh, my. without a doubt, because those are uh, it's easy. It's easy to forget that they're Android. Yeah, uh, and they're not they're not a complete failure, unlike every other Android tablet. <laughs> no. You can't fifty. You can't beat fifty bucks, honestly. It's yeah, cheap. Give it to a kid or whatever. Yeah. Um, back to Nocturne. So I guess another thing that that Kyle reported this week, which, man, I'm really kicking myself thinking we should have had him on today. But he reported that um, there's also a premium tablet keyboard accessory from Bridge, who is well known for their uh, Windows and Mac or yeah, Windows and iPad. Uh, yeah, Surface premium and iPad Surface tablets. Surface and iPad. They're they're keyboard maker. Or, uh, and so this is interesting to me. Um, it may seem super minor at first glance because this commit, it mentions um, these other internal first party, assumably keyboards, and it also mentions bridge and it's talking about something related to compatibility or I don't, I don't know the, the technical details, but we did, we do see connections that bridge, like this is the first time we've seen any evidence anywhere that bridge is making a Chrome OS device keyboard. Um, and as mentioned, they're premium level, so they're like not cheap. Um, they're not like, you know, they're not, they're, they're bridge. They're not super cheap first of all, but bridge is also not a super niche, uh, accessory maker. They're, they're pretty big, pretty popular, especially on the iPad side. Um, I know our Ben Lovejoy is a super big fan of them over at nine to five Mac and he's reviewed a few, I think. So you can read those over, over there. But the bigger connection to be made there is that. If Bridge is getting on board and investing in making 
you know, these accessories for Chrome OS tablets, um, that means that there are going to be Chrome OS tablets, which we have, a, we've already had a lot of pieces to put together to know that that's a thing because we have this little education tablet. I actually have it right here, the Acer, um, terribly Chromebook named Chromebook, tab Chromebook 10. tab, 10. Chromebook tab 10. So we already have that. And we also know that Chrome, Chrome OS 70 is going to make a lot of changes. Uh, that make Chrome OS more uh, tablet optimized. Yeah. In the past um, few, but past few versions, Google Chrome OS oh, has yeah. taken a lot of steps to optimize just for Touch. that one device so far. Yes, yeah, and there has um, to be more. But it's obviously not just that device, and that's yes. been assumed. That's been assumed for a long time. But the connection with this bridge thing is like now we see tangible evidence that a company has likely been told, probably by Google itself, "Hey, we're making a." Either we are making a bunch of uh, premium level Chrome OS tablets, which I think they are, uh, Cough, Meowth, and Nocturne, or one or the other, um, or they know that their partners are making them. And so it's happening. It's happening yeah. this fall, probably. It's almost yeah. certainly happening in the next few months. Chrome OS tablets are going mainstream. And that's a headline, I think. Oh, yeah. So that's pretty much all we have on Chrome OS. Um, I don't know where we are on time. I think we've got about five or 10 minutes left. Um, so um, quickly running down um, some app updates slash other material theme updates. Uh, we saw that Google Search is testing a material theme redesign. I know I said Chrome is probably the biggest um, redesign that they just pushed at once for the moment. But I think Google Search is going to be even bigger. Um, basically, uh, we just saw as you scroll down, there's a persistent app bar at the top. So you can always um, access a search bar and your accounts and stuff like that. Um, Pill-shaped search bar. Again, very early days. We've only seen this on one user who sent us screenshots. Thanks for that. If you, if you ever see any material theme redesigns, be sure to send it to us, um, tips at 9to5mac.com. Or and tips at 9to5g.com, because Google yes. won't let us have 9to5Google on G Suite, because they're jerks. So oh. if anyone from Google is watching this and wants to give us 9to5Google on G Suite, it, the problem is they won't let us have it, because it has Google in the name. Yeah. Um, Never if anyone wants to help us with that, just let us know, because we'd love to have nine uh, tips at 9to5g. or 9to5Google.com, or all of our emails, for that matter. Oh, yeah, please. Um, Steven, me, Abner, Ben, we're all stuck on 9 to 5 Mac because uh, yep. yeah, can't have G Suite. Anyway, oh, sorry. sidebar, sorry. <laughs> valid sidebar, valid complaint. But yeah, so that's that material theme right there. Um, uh, we, um, Dylan, uh, Dylan uh, did a teardown, an APK insight of the Google Play Store. And there's this interesting royalty program called Play Points where every purchase you make, you get points, and there's a level system, and you can redeem these points for play credits or in-app purchases. So that's, that's an interesting little thing. Um, I, while the Play Store now does editorial content, it's not in the same vein as the app stores and the Today feed or whatever it's called, which is honestly very good. Um, if you have access to an iOS device, that's worth a glance. Um, good editorial. Um, so um, other app updates, the YouTube dark theme for Android is finally rolling out. Many people have wanted this, and it's finally widely rolling out. And I lastly, that. do we know, so like someone noticed that turning on the dark theme in messages would make yes. the would make the, you know, splash screen for other apps turn dark is is that happening? Is dark and YouTube happening based on Android messages? Um, or for vice YouTube, versa? YouTube, I don't think so. I think it's just because YouTube is very much an ice, and the way I see it personally, right? YouTube design is so much more separated from the rest of Google. Well, and YouTube I, in general is. They have their own campus, you know? So it's mm -hmm. like, and it, it makes sense. Yep, and testing briefly, um, the splash screen is still white, um, even though the dark theme is on, even okay. though the uh, YouTube specific dark theme is on. Interesting. But yeah, okay. that's a good thing to keep watching for in the future. And lastly, uh, 
Google, the Google Photos on Android got a Google material theme. Uh, we've seen this one before at I.O. It was shown off on stage. And it's there's nothing spectacular about it. The app stays the same, but it's good for consistency. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I think we might just cut the show off there since we it feels like we have a pretty clean cut here. Um, as I mentioned, we'll probably oh, I'm going to ask Kyle and make sure, but we can we'll probably have Kyle on next week to talk about these different Chromebook prototypes because basically over the next four weeks, I kind of want to spend like a week or three, whatever, however long it is, um, four weeks, however many podcasts we have. I want to spend like a week on each category and like dive in a little bit deeper maybe on each of these different kind of sections of hardware that we're expecting um, mm -hmm. at the Made by Google event on October 9th. Um, so yeah, expect that next week. We'll probably go into a deep dive on all of the potential Chromebook hardware, which now that you mentioned it, maybe there's not a coincidence to the fact that Microsoft's event was scheduled a week earlier than Google's. Um, yeah. maybe, they, maybe they know something. I, I don't know. Yeah, um, all these companies have research teams, competitive. Yeah, for sure. Not. Yeah. Um, regardless, you can tune into Alphabet Scoop here uh, on YouTube every week. We record this podcast live every Friday and publish on all your favorite podcasting platforms every Saturday morning. You can find us on all those platforms such as iTunes and Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Google Podcasts, uh, uh, shortwave, just kidding, uh, Google Play, and you can even listen over at 95google.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, and thanks, always, as always, uh, to Abner for joining me. Uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.